Hey, Dr. Clark here. We're looking at the divergence theorem, and we're going to do a couple example problems of how to actually use the divergence theorem to compute these surface integrals. So just a quick reminder, what we have is a flux integral here on a surface. So you've got yourself some kind of, you know, surface S. At each point, you've got a normal vector. And then in addition, you've got some vector field F, right? The wind is blowing or water's flowing or whatever it is. And you wanna know, well, if we take F, dot it with N, we get how much of that vector field is sort of passing out of the surface. So F dot N tells you sort of how much flux is happening at each point on the surface. And then when you integrate along the surface, you get the net flux, right? That's what that is. And what the divergence theorem says, so this equal sign is basically the divergence theorem here. And the divergence theorem says, hey, you can instead integrate the divergence of the vector field, the divergence of the vector field inside the surface. So if you take each point in the solid, not on the surface, but in the solid, and compute its divergence, compute its divergence, compute its divergence, then what happens is the sum of all these individual divergences inside the solid is equal to the net flux out of the surface because of course these divergences cancel, these divergences cancel, and the only ones that don't cancel are the ones that are sort of on the edge of the solid on the boundary. Okay, so uh, a typical problem then is gonna say, hey, find the flux of this vector field through the boundary of the cube. And then you'd say, okay, well, I've got to do a surface integral. They're asking for flux. So I would do F dotted with N and DS, and that's gonna be some complicated surface integral because this is a cube. It's actually gonna have six boundary surfaces. So this is actually six boundary surface integrals. But no, no, no you can use the divergence theorem to say, instead, I'm gonna do a triple integral on the solid where I just integrate the divergence of the vector field dV. And in this case, because the solid is a cube, I'm just going to integrate uh, the z's from zero to one, and the y's from zero to one, and the x's from zero to one, and inside the integral, we put the divergence of the vector field. So we take the x derivative of 4xz, that's 4z. We take the y derivative of the y component, that's negative 2y. And we take the z derivative of the z component, that's y, dz, dy, dx. And now we've just got a nice triple integral waiting for us to compute. So let us compute it then. Um, we're going to have... Uh, 4z, when we integrate 4z, we're going to get 2z squared. And then we're going to have, uh, let's see, this is minus y, so minus yz, when we integrate it with respect to z, evaluating from 0 to 1, dy dx. And when we do that, we're going to get what? Plug in 1, we'll get 2 minus y and plug in zero, we're gonna get zero minus zero, dy dx, okay. And now we'll integrate the y's, we're gonna get two y minus y squared over two, evaluated from zero to one, dx. And if we plug in one, we're gonna get two minus a half, minus zero minus zero, dx. And that gives us three halves, dx. And now we integrate the x's, and we get 3 halves x evaluated from 0 to 1, which is 3 halves. That's the final answer. So the flux through the surface is 3 halves, but we didn't have to do six surface integrals. We just did a single triple integral on the solid where we integrated the divergence of that vector field. All right, let's tackle another one. Let S be the surface of the cylindrical solid D, whose boundary is x squared plus y squared equals four, z equals zero, and z equals one. Okay, so we've got a cylinder here. Looks like that. There's z equals zero, there's z equals one, and this is the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals four, so that's a circle of radius two. And if you were going to compute this 
flux integral through the surface, you'd actually have to do one, two, three surface integrals because there's three different surfaces. But are we going to do three surface integrals to find the flux through that surface? No, we're going to use the divergence theorem. And the divergence theorem is going to just say, hey, do a triple integral on the solid D of the divergence of the vector field dv, and that's all we have to do. Okay, so to do that then, we're going to need to know what is the divergence of the vector field. So let's take a look. What is that divergence? Well, here's the vector field f. So we take the x derivative of x cubed, that's 3x squared. We take the y derivative of y cubed, that's 3y squared. And we take the z derivative of z squared, that's 2z. And we integrate that on the solid region d. Okay, now this is a cylinder, so I'm thinking eh, probably cylindrical coordinates might be nice. So uh, if we did that, we're going to uh, turn this into z's from 0 to 1, it looks like. r's from 0 to 2, because that's a circle of radius 2. And then theta's from 0 to 2 pi. The function we're integrating is 3r squared, because that's x squared plus y squared is r squared plus 2z, and then we have r dz dr d theta, that's dv in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so now we've just got a triple integral, we have to work it out, but we're going to get the answer, no problem. So let's integrate the z's first, uh, that's going to give us 3r cubed z plus uh, r z squared evaluated from 0 to 1. I just took that r, multiplied it in to r squared and to 2, um, and then integrated z to get z squared and integrated 3 to get 3z. And then I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. And when I do that, I'm going to get 3r cubed plus r, and then 0 minus 0 is 0. Okay, dr d theta. Now let's integrate the r's. 3r to the 4 over 4 plus r squared over 2 evaluated from 0, not 0 to 1. I think this was the circle of radius 2, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, the circle of radius 2, I just made a typo there. Um, sorry about that. So the r's go from 0 to 2, and when we evaluate that, what do we get? Uh, 2 to the 4 is 16, so we get 3 times 16 over 4, plus 4 over 2 minus 0 plus 0, d theta. And uh, let's see, what is that? 12 plus 2 is 14 d theta, so that's 14 theta from 0 to 2 pi, and we're going to get 28 pi minus zero, that would be the flux out of that cylinder from that vector field on the boundary surface. So there you have it. Uh, just a standard, uh, nice little cylindrical coordinates review problem, but um, the calculus is pretty straightforward when we have nice, you know, nice integrals to compute. So hopefully you find that useful, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.